Hi, welcome to my YouTube. My name's Louise. Today we're going to cover how to make a front door mat. In this video, we're going to use iron on vinyl for t-shirts. I tried the freezer paper, but in the UK it's very difficult to get hold of. You can only get it from a quilting shop. I tried the sticky back vinyl and I found it didn't stick very well to the coir mat. When using the iron on vinyl, always remember to do it mirror image. Don't forget. I don't have a circuit cutter. Mine is a refined UK cutter. So mine cuts in bigger pieces. But if you have a circuit cutter, what you can do is cut it in steps. So you cut one bit at a time. Then you don't have to panic about it not coming right across. Then what you do is you remove the bits that we normally leave behind. So as you can see, I'm taking away the inside pieces and leaving the big piece behind. Be patient and slowly piddle it all out. If you notice, I'm using the fluff remover for clothes. It makes it so much easier because then you haven't got all these little pieces hanging around and you just stick it onto it. Then when you finish, you just remove all the pieces, tear it all off and you've got a fresh layer to start with. It really is handy. Now to take the pieces out, what I'm using is our dental tools. They're cheap, they're easy to buy. You can buy them from eBay or Amazon. I'll leave a link of all the things where I bought them from underneath. Once you finish piddling all the way around and removing all the bits, then put it onto your mat. Make sure that it's level and that it's equal on both sides. Don't go too far on one side or the other. So use a tape measure and measure it all the way around. Then what, just double check that you haven't missed any pieces so now you've got it all nice nicely lined up get your iron and iron it on all right iron nice and firmly and slowly across if you find the paper is starting to shrivel a little bit then the iron's too hot but go nice and firmly across Make sure nothing is underneath the mat as I'm so well organized and have all my tools where I need them. So carry on all the way across. Where there is small pieces, just iron a little bit firmer because you don't want those pieces moving when you're removing the film on the top. So keep going nice and firmly. Check that it has stuck. If it hasn't stuck, just re-iron that, that part. Start from the corner, I find is better. So slowly use your fingers, making sure that it's stuck nicely and pull away. Go very carefully at this stage because this is where if it hasn't stuck, it will lift. So keep lifting them just when you're pulling, Put your hand on the vinyl. If you find one piece is not stuck, just lay that bit of the film back down and then put the iron on top again and just press it. Also, use your dental tools just to help it unsticking from the plastic film. I found that was very helpful. Then go steady and carefully all the way round. I found what I did was if I got to a certain bit where it was fine, I'd cut that excess bit off the, the clear film. Because having one massive big piece of film does not, it's very difficult to work with. Be patient. Don't rush this part. Every time you come to a little corner, you'll find that you will need your dental tools just to keep it down flat. Remember to subscribe and like if you want to see more videos like this. If you find that your film, you've already cut your film, but the piece is still a little bit loose, use a bit that you've cut off, lay it onto the piece, and then iron that little spot. Make sure you don't touch the vinyl that hasn't got the film on. Because if you have, 
it's going to stick to your iron. Don't have steam in your iron. Carry on until you've removed all the top film. Let's get to the fun part now. Use a good acrylic outdoor paint. Now if you notice I'm putting it direct and working the dots that I've put in all the way around the design. I find it worked better that way than having the paint separate and bringing it across with the brush. It absorbs the paint so much. So it's easier just to put the dots. It spreads a lot easier that way. Work your design all the way around. Be careful just in case some pieces are loose. Do not brush. Do not angle your brush. Keep your brush dead straight upwards because you don't want it to get under the stencil. Carry on, you're going to put two coats, so don't worry so much on the first coat covering everything. But remember, make sure if you're using the small little bottles, I would suggest buying two instead of one. Now work your way around until you're finished. When designing one of these mats, don't use fine filigree work. It won't work. Even with this iron-on vinyl, vinyl, even with this iron-on vinyl, it does tend to move, no matter how hard you try. So if you've got lots and lots of fine lines, it's not going to come through like you thought it would. Bold is better. Now you have finished, have two or three cups of tea, don't do like me, wait until it's still slightly wet, but I'm too impatient, so of course I like to get my fingers full of black paint, peel it off, pull it firmly, sorry for my head, so keep peeling it, this is me if you find that it's really stuck, heat it with a bit of a hairdryer um, and pull it off. It will be quite firmish, so the best is wait for your paint to dry. But no, not me. I had to get my fingers all mucky. So carry on. It will remove a bit of the hiss, the bit of the mat, but don't worry about that. You won't even notice it. Just catches a few bits, but just pull it. But if you notice, my fingers are getting nice and black. Now, there you have it. All finished. Leave it to dry for 48 hours at least before walking on it, so that the acrylic has got time to dry. If you don't have a nice sunny area, leave it by the fire, like I have. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Take care. Stay safe now. Bye.